hello my lovely people thank you so much for coming back to the channel to watch today is all about Finland we are going to apply to a school in Finland those of you who have been expecting the tutorial to apply here's a video for you very simple and straightforward very detailed as always so this is study and work buddy we give you all the information about studies and work abroad our friend from Finland we already had a video with him some time ago i will link the video in the description box but today is straightforward tutorial on how to apply to study in finland no application fees required all you need is your english examination test results if you want to apply to finland right now watch this video and then go ahead and apply to study in finland We can start now. Here is brother Imo Edet. He's in Finland. He's been living in Finland for so many years. And he helps people who want to apply. So he will give you all the information by giving you the guidance and make sure that you do a lot of the work yourself. And if you have any question, you can let us know. And he would also come in with his um advice. So today we are going to take you through how to apply to a next okay. program in Thank you. Family. Yes. They have two types of admission here. Mm. The ones that pertain to foreigners mm. is that is that the one that we're talking about now, joint and separate. Okay. And joint here means that you can apply to many programs in just one application form. Okay. And separate means you can apply to many programs, as many as they are that you've seen, you want to apply to with yeah. different forms. Mm -hmm. So one school to one form and one form to like that. So those are the only difference. And you can apply mix both bachelor or master's on the same form of yeah. application. Yeah, it doesn't. But oh, so far, there are six, six programs altogether. Mm -hmm. That's nice. So I'm going to focus on nursing. I don't know if that serves them well for the nursing program in healthcare nursing okay. that is applicable, that is available now for application. And it's at the University of Novia, Scotia in, in Vasa. Vasa is one of the um, city, I think fourth largest city here in Finland. Okay. Okay. The requirement here, the requirement for nursing into details or trying to market too much about the market, uh, the nursing. The requirements here for nursing is first of all, when you see the program that you want to apply, for example, that nursing, they have what they call study info. Okay. Mm -hmm. And study info here is where you get, where you apply. You do not apply to the university, this joint application. All the application is done on this study info. And study info is, I don't know what you have in Ghana, but in Nigeria is like what we call JAM, mm -hmm. where you apply all universities' admission is applied to them and yeah. they will scrutinize your document based on the requirement that you're supposed to meet and then now send it to the university for processing. Okay. So we are now in study info website and that is this, this is the same nursing program Every program that you check, maybe you try to see what they have, what they offer, what are the requirements. They will always have a link that sends you to that study info for you to apply. Uh, I think in this one here, you can find the link. You learn more about the application process. If you, if you click on this, it will take you to the study info. Application process. And where is it? Okay, you can see here study info or apply online or study info. So there is always a link that links you to that place because you cannot apply directly to the school in this case. Okay, so now this is the program that we're just talking about in nursing. And for this program, you can see here they have basic information for it, which is one all nursing programs. All nursing programs are offered by the Universities of Applied Sciences because nursing program here, they are 
professional this thing, professional study provided by the University of Applied Sciences. And they do have two types of university, Applied Sciences University, which is more like a polytechnic in some sense. And they, they have the other one, uh, the ordinary university. But at the same time, they are, uh, they are, their degrees are both equivalent. There is no difference. There is no disparity between the result that you get from both institutions. And the medium of this nursing study is English. Okay. And the teaching would be daytime teaching, which is direct contact face to face, because nursing program here generally requires physical contact. And it will require you to have practical trainings that you can train whether within Finland or you can decide where you want to have the training. I think it's usually your second year, you start having these trainings come up. And the other thing, because I think Ida just asked not long ago about this tuition fee, you always on this study info, see this basic information, and they always include tuition fee for non-EU EEA citizens, which are people that are not part of the European member states. So in this case, this program, the tuition fee is 10,000 euros, okay? But this tuition fee in Finland started, I think, 20, 2017, there about, yeah. when they decided to start tuition fee for non-EU citizens, okay? So that means that people that came after 2017 started paying tuition fee. But still, the, the school, individual school, is based on their own discretion, what they decide to do. From time to time, do you have some weavers for tuition fee payments? And part of that is a scholarship that they do offer. Okay, So in this case, the maximum amount of scholarship that you can pay for this program of nursing, you could see another nursing program that it differs. That is why when this moment comes, it's a moment for you to sit down, go through each universities mm. and see what they offer so that you, you can suit it to what will be applicable to you. But different people will have different what they are looking out for. Mm. Okay. So in this case, this, for this program alone, uh, if you were to apply it, you have it at the back of your mind that you would be qualified for just 30% of, of this 10000 as scholarship. Okay. Okay. So that means you will be paying like say seven thousand you know, out of this, which it can be high, it can be depending on it could be low depending on the person. Mm. Is this for one year or is for all the three? Yeah, it is for one year for a school session. Okay. okay. So this is for a school session. Now I was already explaining that uh, in terms of tuition fee, when you're just starting for people that are just applying or going to start that first year. Dominantly, you will not have, you will not have um, opportunity to say, let me pay instrumentally or let me pay later. Like the advantage that people that are already in the system do, does have. Mm -hmm. So if you're just starting, you're a new student that is applying to start, mm -hmm. likely you're going to pay everything in full. Mm. Okay. It is only very few schools that accept that you pay instrumentally for that first year majority will ask you to pay in full. So in that case, they will give you something like early bird. Early bird is more like scholarship, but because you're not really qualified for scholarship until when you already started studying, okay? So the early bird is more equivalent, like it could be also 30% of this off for you to pay. But that means at the end, you will still have to pay a full 7,000 euros at the end. So, those are the things that uh, I do advise people to take because these things are real practical things and they are something that you will have to face sooner or later. And this, this thing can actually be hindering to you to apply for your visa, even when you get the admission. So these are things to really consider in order for you to choose a certain school. So if when if uh, you were to apply for this program, this nursing program, you would come down and you see where they have joint application. You can see here that the admissions are, has already started. That is why you're seeing filling the application form. 
if it didn't start, any program that you see and you want to apply, if it hasn't started already, this place will be grayed out. And it will not say fill in the application form, okay? It will say something else. But whenever you see green, it means that it's already ready for application. So you can now fill in the form. But in order for you to know more about the requirements for that program, you can say read admission requirements, okay? And then, then you can see eligibility for this particular uh, program. As a foreigner, what you have is you must uh, have a foreign qualification that provides eligibility for higher education study in the country in question. That is wherever you're from. You must be qualified to study in a higher institution in your own home country, okay, with your degree that you want to use to apply with them. Or you could be someone that already has a bachelor degree or master degree or postgraduate degree or doctorate degree and want to apply for this program. So you could be qualified to apply if you have all these two things, foreign qualification that makes you eligible and also your bachelor or master's degrees. And now for applied science universities, when after this application is just a first step, okay? After you have applied, there is also an entrance exam that you need to pass, okay? So for after application, they will send you a link. That link is the link that you use to write the entrance exam. It is written for all the universities of applied science in, in Finland. They all have the same exam, okay? So what happens is that in this exam, you'll be tested of your knowledge of logic, of your knowledge of English, of your knowledge, depending on the program that you choose, you're going to be tested. If it is nursing, you'll be tested about cognitive assessment. You'll be tested about your mathematics. You'll be tested about your knowledge of physics or chemistry or things like that. Okay. So you really need to pay attention because this, without this entrance examination, without passing this entrance examination, it means automatically you're not qualified for selection for this program. So sometimes most people, this is where the bus stop for them is the entrance exam. So you will need to prepare. If you look on YouTube, there are a lot of materials out there that you can actually or easily use to prepare yourself for this same exam. Because the school here or this examination body will not give you past questions or examples where to look for question in order to prepare yourself they will just ask you to be ready to write the exam and the rest is up to you to prepare or to look for materials to prepare yourself okay part of the requirement to be qualified for that exam every individual has to submit their document of identification and that's in this case is passport they have i think they have stressed here that they do not accept any other form of identification Previously, I've done I've done the same thing that they accepted like national ID cards in place of passport. But I think many things have changed now that they don't even accept that anymore. It's just, it just has to be passport or nothing. And for nursing, I think there is a detail. If you look at, I think there is a detailed information for nursing. If you're doing nursing, if the original is not issued, okay, that one is general. But there is this other one that, as for nursing, you would have to, let me see, for nursing, I think you would have to do some health test certificate and present to them on their request. So, for example, they do ask you to go and uh, maybe do some tests and send the results to them and things like that. It depends on what they request you. They will always ask you for it. So it's not like something you need to start doing beforehand because you do, they do not you do not really have that information on what you need to test, but have it in mind that for nursing, because of the relationship that you would have with maybe for example the patients, they will need to know that you're healthy and you're sound both uh, mentally and physically for the nursing program, because of course I think after a year or so you start having practice. So they will want to be sure that you're healthy and fit for the practice. Is this one like after you've gotten admission? Uh, I don't think it's after. I think it's between, it's part of the admission process. Okay. But I, I, what I, what, 
they do not ask you to submit it now as it is during your application, but they will ask you to send it to them at some point. I, I'm still trying to look for where that information is. Residence where transmit must be submitted. There is where I, I just read it like this afternoon. There is where they will ask you that it is on request. So the school is going to request you to send the document when they need it. You know, that is based on maybe what they have seen and they want to verify for that. They will ask you to send this and send that to help them. And then the other thing, very important, it wouldn't have been important, but this year is very important, is the language requirements, okay? So previously, to apply for the degree program in the University of Applied Science, you didn't need to have English language, this in test result or whatever. But this year, it is very important. In fact, part of the thing that this study info does is to screen document that do not have English test. So if you are applying and you do not have English test, then automatically you are not qualified for even the, ex um, inter um, the online exam that is going to be written. They won't send you the uh, link. So if you don't receive the link, it means that they screened you out automatically because you didn't have everything that they needed. Okay, so in order for you to even make it to that entrance exam, English language is very important. So you upload it while you're applying, or I think they give up to 24th of January, where you can um, give the final submission of that document. Okay, it's written here, 24th of January by 3 p.m. finish time. You, need, you will have uploaded your English certificate and given to them already. Now, the, I think this oh, one they depends mention. on- did they mention okay. the, the score? Yeah, this, this one depends now on the institution, but for nursing and for this applied science university, the only good thing is that they just have a standard this in for every this in which is 6.0. Okay. For all the programs in applied science university, if you have 6.0 as an overall score, it's good enough to qualify you for the next round of entrance exam. They do not care whether you have 5.5 um, in any uh, section or how many you had in any individual section. But what they want to know is that you have 6.0. And once you have that, you're qualified as it is to go further. So uh, that's also different from university. If you were applying for university's program, then they have a different, uh, listen, I think they are only 6.5 about. All right, in a nutshell, that is the information for applying for nursing, okay? And if you were ready to, if you were ready to this thing, start the application, all you would need to do is, all you would need to do is to go to this joint, fill in the application form, okay? And when, when, it, when it starts loading, all you, you don't need to read the information that is there, okay? And put in the program and put in your personal information, okay? Yeah, so if I were to apply afresh, you would have to first give your name and information and email, and then it will be registered on your name because one other thing about finished application is that nobody can submit an application for you. Okay, it has to be you. It has to be your email, your information that is there. If by any chance that they find out that someone that did the application for you could be disqualified from the application itself. Okay, so if you were to have your own information here, once you finish your admission and click submit, okay, then they will send you a link that you can constantly be checking in on this application. Okay, so let's say for example, this is how it works. If I were, this is the nursing program that I'm, uh, we've been talking about. Let's say I wanted to apply for, because like in this same form, in this same form, we can apply for six programs. It would be a waste for you to apply for just one, right? So let's say we want to find other program to add. You just click add study program, okay? Let's say I want to do bachelor in business administration. I could add that to it, okay? And you can see it's already added. 
okay? And so on and so forth until you have six programs that you want to apply. Let's say I want to maybe do Bachelor of Cyber Security online study. I could add that to it. And let's say I have other programs, but so long as they don't exceed the number of programs you can apply, which in this case is six, you're still free to apply. And whether you apply from the university or apply science, it doesn't matter. So long as there are programs offered by universities here, they can still go. Okay. Because I think somebody asked me if, if, for example, if you can apply, because we have two universities here, whether you can apply from program from any of them at the same time. And the answer is yes. You can combine them. It doesn't matter. And it doesn't matter if you're doing master's or bachelor's, so long as they are programmed, okay, you can still combine both in one form and make them six program at two, uh, of a total to uh, make your application valid. And let me just say, this is how many now. So I have five, one more here. I'll just say, mm, let's say, I'll put this one just for putting sake. And then you have six programs now, okay? You can see automatically, you cannot make any, any other addition to it because you have six programs, okay? So the next thing is for you to fill in your information, your first name, your preferred first name, and uh, nationality. Now all this information importantly needs to, needs to correspond with what you have on your uh, identification document, which is your passport. If they differ, then there will be a problem. So we do have an um, instance where, for example, for the ladies that in their documents, when they, they, were, in, when they were studying, they weren't married. So they had on their document, their school documents, their maiden name, okay? And now they, they are married and on their passports, they have their husband's name on it. So what usually happened there is that most people will be confused and put their name, the name on the documents they have, but that's not, that's wrong. Okay, because it will create a lot of confusion and you can disqualify your application. So what you need to do is put the name on your passport. Okay, when you put the name on your passport, when the school sees that it doesn't match, they'll ask you to send, or you can as well send any supporting document for a name change or all those things just to make everything easy for the admission people. In that way, it will be much easier, but it is preferable to put the name on your passport, okay, and not the name on the certificate. But that is what they use to identify you, not the name on the certificate, but on your travel documents is what they used to identify. Okay, so you said all the emails and your contact information, native language, all those things are very important. And then agree on the terms, and when you agree on the term, you now select what qualifies you for the program, the application that you're applying for. In this case, you can, apply, um, as someone outside Finland or U Europe, you could say maybe you have um, upper secondary school outside Finland, you can see it there, and you have a um, bachelor's or master's completed outside Finland. And if you have any other uh, eligibility, by the way, HND2, National uh, Diploma. I don't know if that's the same thing in Ghana, but in Nigeria, we have what is National uh, Diploma. Is also applicable. I was asking this before, and they said you could use it. So you can use also your HND certificate for this application as well. And the rest is just um, completing information that pertains to you. And it's important, the person applying must be 18 years of age, okay? Or at least it's turning 18 years of age but by the time the school resumes, I think. And this one here, since you're not European, okay? So you need to select that you do not have any of the above. Any of the above means that if you have any document, like if you're a European citizen, that means you're, quali you're not qualified to pay tuition fee. Okay, but since you're not and you do not have any of these passport or blue card or all the family residence in Finland or Europe, you do not have any of those. So you choose any of the above and you have 
an attachment to make, which is going to be your passport document in that case. And so this one here, in, in this other part here, you have information that pertains to individual program that you have chosen. Okay, you will need to read through them and select which one is applicable to you. Okay, and this one here is an internal um, examination. That is the internal examination I just mentioned. For each of those program, what you will need to have. Okay, what area of um, studies that you will need to do. So, for example, if you, if you look at this other for four programs here. Bachelor of Health Nursing, Business Administration, Bachelor of Business Administration from different universities that I just chose. And there are four programs there that this information pertains to. Okay, what are the information? So pre-identification before exam. Before the exam, you have to con conduct pre-identification in Condor ID mobile application, okay? you will receive an invitation for that pre-identification to the email that you have provided on March 11th, okay? They will send you an information to do a certain thing. And this thing is just because of this program that you have chosen, okay? So you can see also here that they have a general information that pertains to another four programs and so on. You have to make sure that you meet or you endeavor to provide information for that will suffice for each of those programs that they have mentioned, okay? And when you finish all those things, yeah, you will provide a code. Now this code is used by you for identification to log into the exam when you are going to write the exam, okay? So whenever you do this code, you need to write it or screenshot it or snap it and save it somewhere that you have access to this code because to enter the exam, okay, you will need this same code that you have created now or whenever you're applying, okay? And email address that will be sent to you, like I already mentioned, the form will be sent to you, to your email address. You can actually, you can, I think you can go to the form and edit information there, not your personal information that we saw here. The only aspect of the form that you can edit and you can only edit it while the admission is still in process, okay? So from now until 17th of January is the admission period, you, you can edit. But once it is 18th of January, you cannot edit any other information on this form anymore, okay? And what can you edit? Like I mentioned, you cannot edit your personal information once you have submitted this form, okay? What you can only edit is things pertaining to you, maybe your educational background document, things like that, uploading of uh, this in files and so on and so forth. But anything outside this cannot be edited, unfortunately. So it's something to really note. So before you make the submission, it's something you need to really cross check and be sure that your personal information are correct, are accurate, because you cannot edit them after submission. And now going to the language, this thing, I just, we already answered this, but just looking at it here, four programs, okay, to get invited into the, to the international US, UAS exam and be selected by the international UAS exam selection method. The applicants have to prove their English language skill either by international nally uh, recognized language tests or previous studies. Now, these previous studies, unfortunately, they do not include any African countries. They want people from that studied in the UK or people that studied in any English, European, white, I would say, country. But people from Africa do not fall in our previous study. Despite that we speak English, we will have to present English test, okay? And the deadline for submission of that document is 24th of January, 2024, by 3 p.m., which after that date, if you don't have it, your admission will be, or your application will be disqualified. Now you have different English tests. The popular one, IELTS academics, you have to have it 6.0, okay? You must have written that you're listening, reading, writing, and speaking. They don't want to, they don't care about how many you have per section, but you must have 6.0. 
you have TOEFL, you have, you need to have a minimum score of 60 as well. Okay. PTE academics, you have to have 55. Cambridge English scale score, you need to have about 169. You can see here, of all those things, they don't ask you to show each section like most other application would. Okay. And okay, the rest are just another ways that you can actually um, present your English language. This thing. Like I've mentioned, you will not see any African countries. It has to be Australia, Canada, New Zealand, Switzerland, United Kingdom, United States, and so on and so forth. Unfortunately, we are not there as Africans. And I think basically those are the main information. The rest is all about... Okay, this one is about the language thing, what is acceptable. So you can read through them. And then the rest is all about... The rest is all about your document, your passport. Since you have filled your passport information, you need to also upload it. You upload it here. If you click on this link, it will open a link for you to upload. And the file size should be 1.0 gig maximum. Okay. So you should not be bigger than that. I don't think <laughs> I don't think I don't think we should make it this big. This is a lot. This is big. I don't know what document we but it should be just megabyte size. Gig here is a lot, and it should be clear. And I think this is the format. They have a format here that we need to submit. It has to be your surname. That is how to name the file that you're going to submit, and it should be in PDF, okay? So it's going to be your surname, your forename, and the passport or the document name, okay, dot PDF. That's how to submit it. And yeah, the rest is just your university's documents, how you can you can apply submit them or what you're going to submit. So you need to indicate what you're going to submit. And when you say what you're going to submit, it will create like a PDF link that you can upload a document to verify that. And now I, I did mention about early bird scholarship for people that are paying school fees, which in this case, people that are non-EU citizens, okay? So if you say, I am exempted, then you will not be asked to do anything, okay? So if you, but if you say, I am fee paying student, I'm be considered for the first year of early birth, okay? Of course, you already have submitted your document, which means <clears throat> you won't be asked anything or they won't consider you as EU in that case. So it's always good to choose the right, because if you choose you're exempted and you're not exempted, you're not an EU person in this case, it can cause problems for your this thing and they can disqualify you for it. So these little informations are something to pay attention to them, to understand what they mean and to choose the right thing because let's understand it that there are a lot of people that are applying for this same program and the people that are scrutinizing this application that you're going to submit. We'll be looking at not just you alone. Okay, so you want to make everything right. Even this little information, you need to make them right because it will be so easy for them to toss out your documents or your application if they don't meet their requirements because there are a lot of other people that are making the same applications. So in this case, you can see here, each individual school that you apply to, they have a specific thing that you need to attend to or information that you need to provide. Okay, and you need to, for example, I selected bachelor's degree, okay, for business administration. And it happened that for that bachelor degree, yeah, this is what I need to have. Okay, I need to have a SAT test score to be able to be qualified for that. I must have known that, I must have checked that while going through the school program to know that they need this, okay? So it won't be a surprise when I'm seeing this. It, <clears throat> this place here should not be a place that I realize what is needed. I must have gone through, or you will have gone through each of those program. I understand what the requirements are so that when you come here, it's just for you to submit and move further, not to come and realize that, oh, they need a SAT, okay? Because this information will be there on the admission program web page for you to read and understand what is needed. 
So if I were to apply here, I will, it means that I have this SAT SAT um, test ready, which I'm going to upload at some point. Yeah, and every school like that has individual thing that you will need to attend to. And when you finish that, when you finish that, all you have to do is just click to submit. Okay, you can see here that it's saying check 27 answers. That means that there are 27 places that I need to fill in information that I have not. As you are filling in information for each boxes that, or question that they ask you, it will reduce this to zero, okay? So once you do that and this list is clear, you will see this submit button highlighted that you can click on it. So you will click on it and submit it. And once you submit it, you will get a link on your email that you provided, okay? And automatically with that link, you can now check this application that you have submitted, okay? And that is in a nutshell, that's in a nutshell, the application, this thing, how it goes. And I don't know, um, Miranda, you have questions either? Is there questions? Um, yes, please, I have questions. Please, can you hear me? Yes, yeah, I can hear you. Yeah. With my own, I have done, I have studied nursing here as a diploma. Then I also have a degree in nursing. So if I apply for another degree, will it be accepted or not? Okay, schools here do not, they do not, first of all, they do not despair you on your maybe previous, they don't really care much about your previous, what you did. It's all about for them, do you qualify for that decision? How do you qualify if you meet the eligibility criteria that they set? For, and another thing, even your age too is not is not a problem for them. They do not look at those things. Okay, but okay. what I would have said is, in this same nursing, in this same nursing, there is also some nursing program that I saw, or there is available some nursing program that they just started. It's called Top Up Nursing. <laughs> yeah. So what they mean by top up is that because you already have a degree in nursing, okay? Okay. And you, you're not practicing in, in Finland. So yes. this top up means like they are putting up to speed with the nursing in Finland, okay? okay. And okay. I think it's I think it's a year's program. So in that case, if you already have a degree in nursing and oh, wanted to still practice in nursing, and if you're qualified, if it can be deemed eligible for you to get that top up pro program, then you don't need to start all over because it is for people that are already in nursing but not in Finland. I don't know if you get the point. Nothing. So, in essence, yeah. it doesn't yes. really matter what whether you studied nursing already, but as long as you meet okay. the criteria of the application, they will take you. Mm, why, is the, why is the top up? Okay. Why can you see it? I didn't even I didn't even consider it because I thought everybody would yeah if you look through I will get you the link for okay. that. It's, it's each university offers it individually. Okay. Uh -huh. And it's not every university does that. It's just maybe one or two. And I think the reason why that comes up, I think it's starting this year, is that we have people from Ukraine, especially that are nursing the war in Ukraine, displacing people. So that program is to help not just them now in this case, but every other person that is in nursing. For example, the way you practice nursing in maybe say Ghana or Nigeria is quite different from how they do it in Finland. Mm -hmm. Okay, You will even be talking about the language itself because if you're doing, by the way, if you're doing, one of the, one of the things that you have to do is, if you're doing nursing, mm -hmm. is, you have to learn the language. It's compulsory in that sense. Because your practice and everything depends on it. If you cannot speak the language. So I think that top up program is also included in, in just to keep people that are already nursing up to speed so that they can practice here in, in Finland. It's not to probably it's not a different, I don't think they, they go in deep dive into nursing. That's why it's a year program. It's not like ordinary nursing program, Bachelor of Healthcare, like you've seen here, is three and a half years. Okay, so yeah. it's four years. So, but this one is just one year. So, if you were if you qualified for that, 
one year is good enough to get you a residence permit. I think that is the residence permit to come here and study. So the, the main thing is if you can qualify for that, why not? You should come. That would be a very good thing because you don't have to come and start all over. All you need to do is to focus on adapting your skills and listen to what is obtainable here in Finland. Okay, thank you. And uh, one another question that I have is, do they need bank statements? Yeah, yeah, certainly. But that one is not needed by school. Okay. I think you're talking about you're talking about when you have already gotten the admission, okay. and you're not talking about going to apply for the residence. Yeah. The school will mm -hmm. never ask you for your bank. They have no <laughs> business with your bank. Uh, this thing. Yeah, certainly. When you get to that stage of applying, there is also this one is phase one of coming to Finland. Okay. There is also a phase two, okay. which is the one you have to deal with the migration. The school has no business there. So what, okay. what the school is trying to do now is to give you the admission because you need the admission to be quali to be able to go and apply for your residence okay. permit. So when you go for the residence okay. permit, they will ask you for your bank statement. Okay. You don't know much about the, the top up. I, I don't know if that one to the requirement will be the same as what like the English uh, language certificates, the screening. Okay. Uh, let me just make a quick search. Because I, I can't remember, I, I because I didn't expect that uh, there will be somebody, everybody that I've dealt with, they are either trying to start nursing. They are, it's not always a talk of. Um, okay. Then whilst on it, you said um, yeah. you, have, you can choose more schools, like more programs. Yeah. Uh, but uh, when you were doing it, you said each program has its requirements. From, yeah. Uh, I, for instance, I have IELTS. So should in case I choose maybe business administration in addition to nursing, maybe they will require the SAT, which I don't have. Or you can choose, maybe you are in nursing field, but you can go to the business field. Or I want to know that one too. Yeah. So the thing there is that if, for example, mm -hmm. you, if, for example, you are applying for a nursing and want to do business admin, Mm -hmm. And you know that business admin will require um, SAT. You have to provide SAT as well. Okay. So you have to, because okay. that is the requirement. So because what you're doing now is one program requires you to, because one program, every individual program has different requirements. Maybe the same, but in this case, you have to separate requirements and you have to meet those separate requirements because if you submit it, you know, if you submit it without a SAT, you will be required or you will be assessed for the nursing and not for the this thing. You will be disqualified okay. for the yes, business program. admin okay. uh, because you do not have what they ask you to have. So, okay. yeah, I think I just I've just seen the top up degree, nursing top up degree, and it's a it's a one one and a half year program okay. to two years. Two years, okay? mm -hmm. and there is a tuition fee there, and. Okay. So the purpose of the nursing, I can, I'm just reading now what they write. The purpose of the nursing program is to train nursing experts. The student will receive a theoretical basis, learn professional clinical skill and establish an ethical foundation that is necessary for nurses. The study will prepare the student for the following customer oriented entrepreneurship, clinical nursing, social welfare. And I think those are the branches of uh, what they, they do. So I think basically the opportunities here are, are the same. Yeah, I would go as far as saying this is more like a master's program. Okay. Let's go to study info and okay. we'll see if that's the case. So it's a bachelor program. So level of education framework, European level six, Finnish level six. Mm -hmm. So you will need to you will need to be of that level. Whatever document that you present. Okay, you need to be of that level of requirements for you to be qualified. Mm. Okay, so let's see, Metropolis. So there is a scholarship of one thousand to three thousand. Wow. It's it's an it's an English. It's not a Finnish program, and then it's a contact learning. 
So if I were to go to here, admission, this thing, so they need advanced diploma, diploma in general nursing, bachelor of science in nursing, bachelor of science in, so it's not, it's, it's bachelor, but it's, mm. it's not for people that are, didn't even do nursing already. You have to have done nursing. Yeah. So that is why I was saying that you could be qualified for it. Okay. So whatever document, I think this is where it's applicable to you. Because mm-hmm. the other one, they mentioned specifically which country, but some other higher education degrees that also is applicable to you in that case. So you need to you need to uh, make sure that it's, it's the level when they measure it up is equivalent with that level six, the European standard that they require. So it, it could be a long shot to try out of the six program you could maybe put here and see what happens. And also there's interview. The, the entrance examination is an interview. So student selection requires that applicants successfully complete this degree program interview. All eligible applicants would be invited to an interview and will be evaluated on a scale pass fail. Okay. So you have an interview to go through when, when I don't think there's an exams. So the entrance examination here is you know, okay. one-on-one interview, rather. Not the interview. same with other, yeah, not the same okay. with other, this thing that you're going to write. So yeah, it's a long shot. You could okay. just give it a try and see. Okay. Yeah. Wow, that's a that's very helpful. But <laughs> in, in Finland, do they when you get the permits? Before you get your permit, do they also require you to send money to a, some block account? Oh, okay. In Finland, you do not have to send money anywhere. But very important is that the money, the bank statement that you're going to show has to have your name. Mm. It, ha- it shouldn't be somebody's bank statement. It should be your own name, the applicant. Your name stated there on the bank statement. Now you could have a sponsor, someone who is your sponsor to give you the money. It doesn't matter. But they do have cost of living per month that when you multiply that per year, which you have to show the bank statement, then it will give you a certain amount, I think 6,720 euros that you need to have in your bank account. You will show that you have that amount of money and the source that money came to your account. Those are the important things. You don't have to send the money to anywhere. In fact, you don't have to open a bank account here uh, to do it. It has to be, it could be in Naira, it could be in Cities, City mm. or, or Ghanaian Bank or wherever, but the equivalent of that money must be equal to what they have requested that you should have mm. as your source of um, income. Mm. I think that one will be for another video. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Miranda, do you have any Okay, more yeah, that, that's... That's it from, I don't know, Miranda, I wanted to ask you, is it, you said you have already nursing, okay? Yeah. Is it, yeah, is this your first time trying to apply to Finland? Yes, please, please. please. Uh, sorry, you said what? I said yes, this is my first time for Finland. Oh, okay, okay. So, yeah, it, it, I don't know, Ida already said, like, how I do it is usually, okay, I, I can be okay. here, I can make my time to guide you on what you need to do, okay? Okay. And of course, others. I have people that I'm already doing that for mm-hmm. right now. So okay. I, I can give my time for you to help you, guide you on what to do. Okay. But generally, you are the one to make that application. I can only, I'll give you information on what you need to do. You have questions, you can ask me. Okay. And then I can tell you, okay, do this and do that. But generally, you have to be the one to make your application. And that's how um, I, do, I do it. Mm. Okay. So, so when will you do your application, Miranda? You said, come again. When will you start your application? Oh, I can even start it today. Mm. I, just, I was just waiting. Okay. <laughs> then if you okay. have any questions, then you let us know. Okay. So I'm done here. I don't know. I think that my last asked. question. Oh, okay. okay. I think I have another question. Will they allow uh, your spouse to 
come with you or after that one too. I want you to know much about it. Yeah, very important. But it's very important because, yeah, in short answer, yes, very 100%. Okay. In fact, I, I did not know this until probably two years ago. Yeah. Okay. That even when you are applying for your first residence permit from right from Ghana, that you and your spouse at the same time can apply. I did not know this. It is very possible. In fact, 100% they will give you and your spouse without questions. But okay. the only thing there is, that means now that your source of in, your income that you need to show <laughs> needs to be double. Okay. okay. Because okay. you're not just talking about one person now, you're talking about you and another person. Yeah. So whoever is going to handle this account statement, you need to show for two people. Okay. In this case. Okay. So... If you have children also, that should be bear in mind that it will multiply. Okay. Yeah, the number of people, the more the money is needed. Okay. Um, this information are always there on the immigration, this thing, how much you need per person, and you need to multiply that okay. by one year and be able to show it. But yeah, it's 100% okay. possible that you can move with your family at the same time. You don't have to wait. Okay. Okay. Even with that, if it's not like a one-year program, you can still move with them, like as yeah. a top-up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you can. Okay. The the okay. criteria for giving you the visa, them giving them the visa, is because you as a spouse, because here as a family, they don't joke with family. Yeah. Okay. So if you have, especially your husband, your wife, your children, they, that is a very strong bond that they don't take into joke. Joke. So okay. if you're coming with your family and you yourself as the primary person you're qualified, they will give you. But the thing is that okay. if they give if you that if they give you one year based on your program that you come to study, then your family too has one year. Okay. So they can't give them more than they have given you. Yes, so it's going to be okay. the same, yeah, the same year that they'll give to you, both of you. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. All right, thank you so much. Thank You're you. welcome. So hopefully Mirinda will be in Finland by end of this year, right? In hopefully, August. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully. Yes. Hopefully. <laughs> it would be it would be very exciting yeah, really to see it work really. Yeah. Thank you so much. God bless you. Yeah. Have a nice. Thank Sunday. you. Thank you very much. Okay. Bye. Okay. Bye bye. -bye.